diseases of beans so now we'll see the list of important diseases in beans my name is Janet Shankar Reddy and I am doing PhD plant pathology in Anamal University so these are all the list of important diseases in peas the first one is anthracnose which is caused by Coltrotricum lendimuthianum the second one is root rot which is caused by Rhizectonia solani or few cases uh, we can also uh, uh, found that uh, Fusarium solani is also associated with root rot and then rust which is caused by Euromyces appendiculatus and bacterial blight which is caused by Xanthomonas campestris pathover fascioli dry root rot which is caused by macrophomina fasciolina powdery mildew erysiphae folligoni and sarcospora leak spot which is caused by sarcospora species soft rot schleroutinia schleroshiorum and uh, bacterial blight which is a bacterial disease which is caused by xanthomonas campestris pathover fascioli and the last one is a viral disease which is mosaic which is caused by mosaic virus so now we'll see in detail about one by one the first one is anthracnose which is caused by coltrotricum lendimuthianum it's a very very important uh, uh, disease in beans so if you see the symptoms we can clearly observe so the symptoms not only can found on uh, uh, you know pots but also we can see the same symptoms in stem bracts inflorescence and you know uh, petals sepals everything can be seen but the if you see the uh, you know uh, in beans so pots are the economic pots right economic pots in the sense you know marketable pots right so we can't able to market the leaves and as well sepals or petals whatever it is so we can only uh, concentrate on uh, uh, you know uh, concentrate on uh, you know something um, uh, market related aspect so here if you see the beans so pots are the market related i mean uh, a marketable pot uh, uh, marketable uh, uh, product, uh, produce so if you see here the symptoms mainly we can see here in pots if you see clearly so initially uh, you know uh, like you know a small brown to black color sunken spots can be seen we can see here initially is you can start from here we can initially small brown to black color spots can be seen but this brown to black color spots coalizes and they can uh, uh, you know they can coalize one by one and it look like to very very big spots in later stages in some cases if if, if the pod is dried we can see here a reddish yellow to slightly raised pustules or i mean pustule like uh, margins can also be seen but it is a very 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 important and uh, most dest i mean destructive disease in uh, uh, bean production so as i told you that you know uh, later stages the uh, small spots coalizes and it covers the entire pods so it can completely uh, fail to fetch the market price right so coming to the management aspects uh, uh, you know uh, uh, better to because uh, it is a best example for seed borne disease so selection of uh, diseased free seeds for sowing is a very very important one if we select the seeds which is of uh, which is free of disease so we can automatically control the disease that a maximum extent right so the next one is the crop rotation also can be adapted and then we can also go with some uh, application like uh, you know uh, chemical applications like carbondism at the rate of 0.1 percent or mancozy at the rate of 0.2 percent can be recommended for foliar spray so some you know as i told you that it's a seed bond disease right so we can also go with the seed treatment so seed treatment with the carboxin or carbon decim at the rate of two gram per kilogram of seeds can be recommended so to control the disease the second disease is root rot which is caused by Rhizectonia solani and Fusarium solani so not only this Rhizectonia and Fusarium but other species of uh, soil bone pathogens i mean other uh, soil bone pathogens also can be involved in root rot if you see uh, you know pythium or uh, Rhizectonia and Fusarium all these species are which is involved in uh, root rot so uh, if you see here the symptoms if you if you see the symptoms we can clearly see initially what will happen uh, initially uh, the uh, i mean the symptoms can be observed in above soil i mean above soil pots and initially the water soft softening of uh, uh, sorry, sorry water color discoloration or water soft uh, 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 you know uh, uh, discolorations okay what can i say that uh, are not discolorations like uh, uh, you know uh, water droplets in watery uh, soft droplets can be initially seen above the soil pots so later what will happen the re roots slowly starts to die or decay and then uh, what will happen once the root slowly starts to die or decay automatically the roots can't able to uh, get the available i mean uh, required amount of uh, water as well as nutrients for the plant so it automatically leaf slowly starts to convert into yellow in color so you see it completely fails in later stages. what will happen it completely uh, fails for uh, germination or you know uh, uh, entire seedlings may be stunted completely uh, you know it completely fails the crop right so the main symptoms as i told you above uh, above the ground uh, ground level or soil level the symptoms mainly starts and initially water softening uh, uh, symptoms and then later stages you know it, it, it slowly extends and all the roots will die and uh, all the roots can't able to uh, take the water so that automatically leaves will die right 
so coming to the management aspects uh, do not plant beans in low and poorly drained soils so here the best management practices do not plant beans at low and poorly drained soils so we have to drain the soil very well so the next one is better to go with the raised beds right uh, you know if you see uh, in uh, uh you know uh, in pithium in tomato tomato pithium that is a, a damping of vegetables so if you use the raised beds we can automatically control that is we don't need to go to you know any practices are spraying something blah 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 so you just you just if you if you, if you just raise if you use the raised beds we can automatically control the damping of in pithium that is damping of in tomato right so here also we can recommend uh, uh, raised beds are can be recommended along with uh, better to uh, plants after the soil warmed with the first 69 degree foreign heat at the rate of 4 cm depth and reduce the disease build up of soil and rotation crop rotation is also one of the management practice and remove the crop debris immediately after harvest so if there is any crop harvest i mean uh, crop debris will be there better to harvest immediately so avoid overpopulation or overcrowding of plants so uh, so that that can be automatically uh, you know uh, escape uh, disease not only escapes the disease but we can also reduce the uh, nematode population in soil right so plant seeds are treated with the captain so here the first seed treatment captain can be recommended so that the disease can be controlled at some extent so the apply chemicals according to the label so here in the case uh, they are not mentioned any special uh, uh, you know uh, chemicals so uh, based on the labels we can better to go with so the next disease is dry root rot which is caused by macrophomina fasciolina the name itself indicates root rot and dry root rot so the root will become completely dry and rots in later stages very simple so here if you see the infected stems or infected plants uh, maybe reddish brown color spots may be seen on leaves and sometimes we can also you know uh, 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 seen on stem regions but mostly we can see on leaves only so what will happen they slowly sp starts to spread from upward direction this slowly starts to spread from plant upward direction as well as downward direction also if you see the roots we can clearly see it completely rots and we can easily pull it out pull it out because the only reason is so as you know uh, as i told you it's completely rots what will happen it it will completely lost the stability to hold the plant right so that we can easily pull it out from the uh, soil region so entire cotyledons you know uh, uh, stems and everything will be uh, completely destroyed because once the root get destroyed it automatically everything will be getting destroyed so that the seedlings are uh, if the if, if it happens in you know grown plant everything will be uh, uh, gone waste right so the next one is uh, sorry coming to the management aspects so crop rotation is one of the best management practices along with the destroying of infected plant debris also can be recommended so here uh, seeds are can be treated with carbon at the rate of 2 gram per kilogram of seed that is next one is a biocontrol agent trichoderma viridi 4 gram per kilogram of seeds can be recommended if it is a pseudomonas fluorescence that is a bacterial biocontrol agent we can recommend a 10 gram per kilogram of seeds we can also grow with the soil ranging or spot ranging with carbon at the rate of 0.1 percent can effectively manage this disease i suggest you to go with uh, biocontrol agents because uh, you know they if, if you use biocontrol agents that can be easily uh, taken up the by soil and can enrich the uh, microflora over there so we can see the next one the next one is rust which is caused by Euromyces fasciole typica so the name itself indicates you know uh, the rust itself indicates the, so we can see small uh, uh, brown to black color or reddish brown to black color raised pustules can be seen on uh, leaves it is a uh, quite common if you see uh, any plant so the rest uh, uh, here here in beans we can see uh, small uh, reddish brown color uh, rust pustules the sori contains iridospori let us consider it is a it is a a colony or sorry it contains a huge amount of iridospores so later what will happen the sore ruptures the sore ruptures are break down into the epidermis and the all powdery iridospores uh, can give rusty appearance we can see here can give a rusty appearance so later what will happen this small uh, til i mean uh, the formation of teliospores will happen where the uh, reddish brown color spot slowly starts to con convert into dark brown or black color okay so coming to the management aspects uh, better to go with uh, uh, you know uh, destruction of uh, uh, crop debris if there any uh, if there is any crop debris or uh, any uh, stubbles will be there better to remove from uh, earlier cropping seasons and proper spacing also the one of the main best management practices crop rotation and keeping the keeping the uh, field clean is also one of the best management practice and uh, spraying of crop thoroughly with wettable sulfur at the rate of 0.25% or mango zip at the rate of 2.0.2 percent can be recommended and also one more fungicide that is chlorothalonil can be recommended to control this disease 
So coming to the next one, powdery mildew, which is caused by erysifa polygoni. So it is one of the important diseases in beans, if you see. So the name itself indicates eri, sorry, uh, powdery mildew in the sense white color, whitish powdery growth or grayish powdery growth, mostly whitish powdery growth, not grayish. So whitish powdery growth or white color powdery growth can be seen on the surface of leaves. So here, uh, later stages, what will happen? Uh, they slowly starts to curled or dwarfed and many uh, you know uh, sometimes may turn into yellow in color also so this mostly uh, leads to the falling of beans so the you know the powdery uh, complete uh, you know uh, amount uh, i mean uh, uh, high uh, huge amount of powdery deposition if there in the plant later stages what will happen they slowly uh, uh, the pods will uh, completely detached and they fall down from the uh, leaves so coming to the management practices avoid overcrowding of plants and adequate spacing can be recommended and when disease were first noticed at initial stages if you are noticed the disease uh, better to go with application of sulfur dust or spraying of uh, uh, sulfur dust can be recommended do not do not use sulfur uh, uh, for young plants so if it is in young stages uh, we recommend to not use sulfur so the next one is watery soft rot which is caused by Schleirotinia schleirotiorum the name itself indicates watery soft rot so small water uh, watery spots or soft uh, simply what can we say that uh, softening of uh, uh, plants especially uh, as i told you that it's a schleirotinia schleirotiorum it's confined to stems especially stems so some cases we can also see i think it you can also see leaves and pots also but most it can confine to stem regions stem regions and just above the soil regions we can see the schleirotinia schleirotiorum or uh, that i mean schleirotinia schleirotiorum infection and uh, as i told you that sim uh, symptoms small soft soft and watery soft rot i mean watery soft uh, sorry watery spots can be seen so sometimes we can also observe this a uh, white color uh, a softening of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, fungi growth in uh, stems also we can see here some cases we can also see in uh, stem regions also due to cold and moist conditions uh, uh, griddling of stems as well as white color watery soft uh, you know uh, discolorations or white color simply little bit powdery appearance but it's not uh, we can't uh, completely conclude as a powdery appearance so later what will happen the infected pots can be uh, turned into soft watery masses so it's completely like simply like that if you if you kept it in uh, uh, uh beans for uh, beans in fridge for uh, 20 days or 30 days we can clearly observe that water color water is soft uh, uh, you know uh, discolorations that can be observed in the beans right so the same type of symptoms also we can see when it can, when we when it uh, comes to uh, uh, pods soon what will happen white color fungal fungal growth can be observed as i told you if there if the uh, beans were there in the fridge for 20 days so if you take the take it out from the fridge and you can uh, put it out for next two days what will happen we can see the white color powdery i mean not powdery growth fungal growth can be seen that is a schleirotiana schleirotiorum so coming to the management aspects uh, you know uh, improving of air circulation between plants and rows and you know you can also recommend a, a chemical control for uh, home gardens so the next one is a bacterial blight which is caused by xanthomonas campestris pathover fascioli which is a bacterial disease so here uh, uh, you know in bacterial blight of beans we can see the two types of uh, widespread bacterial pathogens that is uh, uh, that affects the beans the first one is a bacterial common bacterial blight which is caused by xanthomonas campestris pathover fascioli that we are seeing right now and the second one is halo blight which is caused by pseudomonas syringae pathover fascioli it is also one of the important diseases in beans so here if you see the symptoms we can uh, see the symptoms in uh, stems leaves and you know fruits pods every in everywhere we can see the symptoms so when it comes to you know a bacterial blight of uh, uh, a common bacterial blight the symptoms in uh, leaves are you know initially brown color symptoms are can be clearly seen on uh, seen uh, i mean uh, brown color discolorations can be seen on the leaves later stage what will happen it will quickly drops whereas in halo blight what will happen grayish yellow color circles if you see here grayish yellow color circles in case we can see the grayish yellow color circles in halo blight so that halos can be observed in halo blight whereas in common blight what will happen as i told you that you know uh, brown color discolorations can be seen on leaf and later stage what will happen they slow they completely uh, drop it off after simply uh, they can completely detach it from the plant so coming to the management aspects uh, both the diseased uh, diseases uh, uh, come from the infected seeds that can be avoided and uh, go going with you know uh, over watering can be cannot be recommended and especially in you know uh, over watering in the sense you know 
a spraying of water that can touch the plants especially foliage can't be recommended so uh, like adequate amount of water can be required for each and every crop if you come to here beans uh, uh, better to uh, uh, apply the water uh, uh, care should be taken that should be not touched with the foliar especially foliar always should be wet okay and uh, uh, you know crop uh, uh, you know uh, crop rotation also can be recommended if you see this this is this can this is can be survive in soil uh, in in between one to two years so if we if we uh, you know if we recommend crop rotation or if we are doing crop rotation we can definitely uh, manage this is to a certain extent so along with uh, you know uh, you know uh, spraying uh, 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 for copper related uh, fungicides also can be uh, recommended and it is a bacterial disease so better to go with the antibiotics so commercial availability of antibiotics are very less nowadays right so these are the better to go with uh, you know crop rotations and you know uh, uh, use of uh, a bit, uh, good quality seeds are the one of the best management practice so the next one is the bean common mosaic which is caused by bean common mosaic virus which is a viral disease we can clearly see here uh, light to dark color mosaic patterns can be seen uh, here actually the symptoms are not clear uh, if you see here we can uh, uh, you know clearly observed inflected leaves are you know completely necrosis are you know uh, uh, completely converted into uh, yellow if you see the winds uh, leaf winds uh, stems and every single pod can be affected later stages what will happen the entire uh, field can be slowly starts to convert into yellow in color so here uh, if you see the pods pods are also chlorotic and you know uh, few amount of seeds are produced so as i told you that's a viral disease most of the viral diseases are transmitted by uh, any one of the vectors so here uh, it is a seed borne disease and it can also survive in weed hose and coming to the vector it is a aphid vector which is mysis persicae this is mysis persicae so which is uh, which transmits this bean uh, common mosaic virus so coming to uh, you know uh, management practices uh, uh, tolerant varieties or resistant varieties are can be recommended along with the healthy plants or healthy uh, uh, seeds from the healthy plants can be selected and remove and destroying of infected plants and also with the spraying of methyl dimetron which is an insecticide uh, 2 ml per liter of water can be recommended or systemic any one of the systemic insecticide can be recommended as i told you that it is a viral disease right so it can be transmitted by any one of the vector so if we control the vector i can automatically control the disease right so we can recommend uh, uh, you know uh, insecticide for control of uh, vectors so coming to questions not only for ars or net but also for exam related if you see that uh, anthrogonos coltrotrica blendimuthi and very 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 important which is a seed bond is something like this. sometimes they will ask uh, you know coltrotrica blendimuthi and our beans anthrogonos which is a, a best example for what type of disease seed bond disease something like that so and the casual organism we may expect casual organisms and rust uh, eromyces fasciolae typica and uh, powdery mildew recipe polygonin so casual organisms also one of i mean uh, we can expect from this so this is about beans